Hey guys, this is just a little update with things that I'm mucking around with. I just got a new backdrop cloth, which is this one here, before I was using paper. Um, this came in, which is uh, something for me. This is a McVickers. They had a, I think it was Gold Rush or whatever it is, tournament over in Queensland. And this is one of the bats uh, that Tom McVicker was making and selling for 150 bucks. These are basically a grade three, made in India. I think he shaped them. The way he does the shoulders is slightly different, so unless he's changed that, maybe he didn't make these. They've got his distinctive uh, stickers on them. Uh, I have actually rounded the toe on this one. I don't know if you can see that there. This one actually had a slight crack just on the toe there, which I fixed and sure good. So, I mean, it can't be sold, but it certainly can be used by the owner. Let's have a tap up and see what it sounds like. So, pretty much a mid middle. This is grade 4 timber, I would say. I think it was 211 when I got it. So we're rounding the toe, we'll take that down to, oh it's 211.2 with the shoe goo. So, oh the other thing I've changed is the um, grip, so this is a heavier grip. So it is actually slightly under. I just found an old grip and put that on. That's just an old GM shock absorber yellow, you can see that's second hand. Um, I have actually purchased something which I'm going to experiment with in the next month or so, which is a, um, a cheap Chinese laser engraver, one of these little desktop ones which is powered by USB, so I might actually use this to do a bit of engraving on to see just how it turns out. I've got my old bat up there that I can practice on first, just part of the hobby. That's got three rubbers at the end, not perfectly straight. This is still for sale, this is that Salix pod. So that there. I've got the uh, cricket bat info sticker on it there still. That's the bat there with five grains. I think I commented to somebody, you know, it's all about how they're prepared. But definitely wide grain bats take longer to play in because there's just more moisture in them. This bat's now 295, I think, under the scuff, so 296. It's got that traditional shape with a mid-low position middle and a higher position nice full convex shape which is that pod and uh, a little bit of thinning well it's not concave but it's just not as thick as the AJK which I noticed um, was reviewed recently but it does have a fairly decent bow on it that you can see there it's a nice bat for I think I'm saying 220 somebody that a properly pressed bat will ping through that whole hitting area. So yeah, I, I think it's a good bat. And the quality of the cover is, is really awesome too. So I don't think for 220 you're going to get better value for a brand new fully knocked in bat. This is one of the bats I've got left. This is a DB1. That was a gift for me. So I didn't use that much during the season. It's got 10 grains. It's grade 2. You can see there it's not as clean on the back. It's got a little pin knot just here. It's had a bit of uh, play in, in the nets. Maybe a few nets. But it's still a bit, it's still playing in. This one is a mid-high middle. Stems low. And because of that shape, it's such a high middle, it's got a really nice pickup. You've got 3mm of concaving, 
high position edge, high position spine, uh, but that spine goes all the way almost down into the toe and up into the handle. So it's actually a really nice bat. As uh, with most B3s, there's no bow. And this one, now it's 2.83. And one of the ways I got the weight down, I put my money where my mouth is, and I did one of those strapping tape handles. So I removed all the binding and strapped from the top down and there's only binding at the bottom now. And that removed a considerable amount of weight. Uh, it still feels fine when I use it in the nets. I actually don't mind it. You can see there that that, bind, that uh, tape has smoothed out nicely now and I sort of just followed the contour of each ridge down. So it's, it feels beautiful in the hands actually. 2.82 that's a really nice bat. So this is the bat that I ended up using as the match bat for the season. I have actually changed that sticker. That's supposed to say GN7, but this is an Indian Ultimate. You can see here the V here. I think we had VA on the, the Grove. But one thing very similar with all the Indian GNs is they've got this writing under the handle. And this one's got the three cork inserts, just like that Grove. So that one is 286. Much heavier, well it's heavier than the other one. And this bat has had a few games now, so we can see here what this one sounds like. The GN, the Indian ones have a red metallic stamping rather than black. You can see that there. It's actually got a decent bow on it. You can see that there. It's got nice grains running straight through. It's got a shugu toe on it. It's a mid-middle. Very much a bat that uh, has a lot in common with the English, uh, the UK grey nickels bats because they're all made over in India. Um, so this one even though it says Ultimate, it's probably the equivalent to the UK Prestige. The UK Ultimate is a much lower grade. It does have a, a pin knot there, but this one's definitely selected on performance. It's funny, you know, when you're knocking bats in, you can tell the ones that are going to absolutely fly or the ones that really um, feel good in your hands. One thing I did get with this, which is when I bought the Salix, I bought one of the UK covers for them. So you can see there the Grey Nichols UK covers are much nicer than the, the Australian ones with the exception of the handmade covers. These are nice and padded and all material. So yeah I like that bat. It's a really nice bat. So the other thing I was tinkering around with recently on the page was some um, stickers. So what I've got here are just some sheets you can buy. These are clear plastic stickers that you can print on. Sometimes when you print the wrong amount of ink, like you have to put, print them at a low ink. Some colours run, some don't. You can see the red has run there where it's much lighter there. And I was just experimenting with different things. This isn't so much the logo for the, for the page. It's just something that I was mucking around with at the time. Um, but I just thought I'd show you that. Now these ones, as they are, they can't really go on a bat because, as you can see here, if I put moisture, that just comes straight off. So if you want to make your own stickers, uh, you need to go on the internet and look for uh, protection film, I think they call it. Glossy protection film, you can get it for cars and things like that. And basically once you've printed it, if you can put that down and then slowly work your way across getting all the air bubbles out you can actually put the sticker on and then you get something like what you see here which this is this sticker here with this on top of it so this does not run at all because I've sealed it from getting any moisture under on the actual uh, you remember I did do the really big Cricket Bat Info one and somebody commented don't do that because it looks like those horrible Beluga stickers that I had on one bat. 
and then I was rethought about it and thought, no, nah, I didn't really want to do that. So I just sort of mucked around with different colour schemes and it was just something I was doing. I like to tinker in the shed. Anyway, that's all. Just a little video of different things that I'm mucking around with. Uh, you'll get to see examples of the laser uh, etching once I refine it. It will do an area of uh, eight centimeters by eight centimeters, so that's big enough to do emblem or something. But obviously, it's a bit further down the track uh, to getting it somewhere where I'll actually show it to you, unless it's really, really easy. All right, that's the new muslin cloth, new green screen. We'll see what that looks like in the video. Thanks very much, people, for watching this. See you later.